when he beheld him, when he saw him, the Bible said he fell down as dead. This is not the same Jesus. The one I met, the one I knew, I could rest on his bosom. This one must be worshipped. Hallelujah. After all his encounter from Revelation chapter 1 to chapter 3, and then he came to chapter 4, what is he still looking for? Church, if it was you and I, after chapter 3, we will build a tabernacle and call it Jesus Revelation Ministries International. I have seen the Lord worldwide apostolic ministries. But look at this man of God. He wanted more. He knew that if he had seen this much, then there is something more. How many of us have read uh, um, Charles Dickens' uh, favorite, it's my favorite, Oliver Twist. You read it in high school. He wanted more. He had seen so much, yet this man still bent down to look. Listen, when you look, you can just be a glance. And that's why the very next word said, behold. Because when you look, you see. Hallelujah. He looked and he beheld. When you behold, you are seeing something more than the ordinary. When you behold, you are seeing beyond what the physical eyes or the, the physical mind can see or can look at. You are seeing much more. That's why John the Baptist in introducing Jesus said something. He didn't say look at. No, he said behold the Lamb of God. Because they just saw somebody, another rabbi, walking past. And he said no. He had to draw the attention. When you behold, your attention is drawn to what you are beholding. And that's what John did. He said there has to be more. I want to see him more. I want to know him more. There was a hunger. There was a desire in his heart for this reason, Lord. He wanted more. Hallelujah. John's gospel. I must read that scripture. John's gospel chapter number 20. Let's see somebody else who had encountered God so much. Yet, she still looked because she wanted more. There has to be more. Church, if this is all Christianity is all about, let's go home. But there is more. That's what wakes me up every Sunday morning. That's what makes me to come to church. That's what makes me attend prayer meeting every Friday. Because I am persuaded there is more. And I'm not going to rest until I see that more that I know is there. John's Gospel chapter 20. There is more, church. There is more. And God wants us to have the more. And I'll read from verse 11 quickly. John 20, 11. But Mary stood outside the tomb weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked. And she looked into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white sitting. One at the head and the other at the feet. Where the body of Jesus had lain. Then they said to a woman, why are you weeping? And she said to them, because they have taken my Lord away, my Lord. And I do not know where they have laid him. Now when she had said it, she turned and saw Jesus again. 
She looked and she saw. Then she heard. Hallelujah. She saw. And Jesus said to call her, said to her. And Jesus said, that, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? She supposed him to be a gardener, said to him, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have taken, laid him, and I will take him away. Then Jesus said to her, Mary. All the chief apostles had come. They had looked. The tomb was empty. And they left. She was there. Why did she look again? If she wanted, if, if I mean, she, she could have been satisfied with the report of the chief apostles. After all, they were the chief apostles, but they left. But one woman who wanted more, one woman who was Oliver Twister, one woman who wanted to see more, bent down and looked. There has to be something more. And she looked. Were the angels not there when the disciples looked? They were there. I am persuaded they were there. But they looked and left. She beheld. And that's why she saw them. They looked. Oh, okay, a glance. He's not there. And they left. But she bent down. She stooped down. And she looked. Then she saw. Revelation 4 said, He looked and he saw a door opened. Then he heard. Now, look, saw, behold. The next thing that happened was that he heard. Listen, church, if we hear and we do nothing about it, it means nothing. And that's why all King James will tell you, hear and hearken. Listen, the two are the same word. One means that you've got to respond. Amen. He saw and he heard. Come up higher. Church, this is where we are. We are going around. In Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 6, they had gone round the mountain. They were just going right They tarried there. And God came and said to them, you have tarried long on this mountain. Turn and take your journey. They heard it. But they, when they got up from that mountain, you know what they did? In chapter 2 verse 3, he came again because they were still there. This time, they got up, but this is what they were doing. Going round the mountain. Going round. Going round and not making any progress. That's where the church is, people of God. We're going round. We're circumventing. We are um, um, recycling everything everything that we are doing. One church is doing a program. We run and do it. And we are going around. But God said, turn to the north and take your journey forward. Take your journey forward. We have stayed in this mountain too long. We have circumvented the mountain of inactivity, of, of doing the same thing that is bringing no result and no change. He said, it's time. Listen, we're doing well. One of my favorite authors said something. She said, we've come a long way, baby, but we've come a long way in the wrong direction. We've come a long way. Listen, it's been said here over and over again. The world does not have the answers that afflict us. Hollywood does not have the answer. The politicians does not have the answer. Only Jesus has the answer because he is the answer. And he is inviting you and I. Come up! Stop going around 
in circles, you will get nothing. Come on, and I will show you in your family, in your job, in your ministries. He's inviting everybody. Come on. Hallelujah. Church, so long as we are here, we will be meat to the devil. But hear me and hear me good. The word of God says we are no meat for the devil. Dust is his food. You and I are seated with Christ in heavenly places. We are far above him. That's why we can trample upon him. But if we stay here, we're going to be meat. And that's what Jesus is saying. Today is the last Sunday of November. We have one more month, 31 days, to join him to come up. 31 days in which God is calling everyone, every family, every brother, every father, every husband, every wife, every church, come up and I will show you. When we go up, then we bring the answers down. Like Moses, when he went up, he came back changed. He came back. Nobody needed to let him know that he had been with God. That's what our world is waiting for. That's what our world is waiting for. To go up. When we come down, they will see that we've been there and we are back and we have the answers they are seeking. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Listen, church, 2015 must never be the same. It must never be like 2014. And that's why this word is coming to you, it's coming to me. Church, I've been going around in circles. I've been in the valley. And then I heard this word. Come up. Come up. Because I was complaining. Lord, you told me to come here. Why am I saying? He says, come up. There is a time to be in the valley. But it's time to go up. It's time to go up and meet our Lord and our Savior. He is the answer. He is our hope. Nobody else will do it. Nobody else can do it for you. It's only him. And I will show you. He showed the church. He showed his servant what was wrong with the church. But he didn't end there. Thank God he didn't stop there. Hallelujah. It's good to know the church is in a mess. But there is hope, church. There is an answer to the mess. When we go up, we will come back with the answer. And the problem will be gone. When we go up, we will come back transformed. Going round in circles will not bring transformation, church. But when we go up and we change direction, he says, come up. It's an invitation. Hallelujah. He says, come up. Everyone is invited. Everyone that named the name of the Lord is invited. Come up. Come on, church. We've sat down for too long. It's time to stretch our muscles. It's time to stretch our weak knees. It's time to stretch our feeble hands. It's time to go up to the mount of the Lord. It's time. We need to go up. If 2015 must be different, then we need to go up. Hallelujah. Grace. If you don't go up, you won't know what is wrong with your family. You probably know, but you will have no answer. Next year, the problem will remain because we refuse to go up. The problem will remain. But if you would dare, 
Listen, listen. These people were crazy about Jesus. They were crazy for him. So they needed to do crazy things. When Mary Magdalene went back, the Bible says they looked at her as somebody who was telling tale. Hallelujah. We read the scripture on Friday that said, and they criticized her sharply. Are you ready for that? Because to go up, there will be some people even in the church, there will be some people even in your family that will criticize you sharply. You've got to set your face like a flint and say, I don't care. I'm crazy. If you don't know, I am crazy. I don't care anymore what you think about me. I used to care so much. But now I don't care. Give me Jesus. And it suffices me. That's who I'm looking for. That's who I'm passionate about. Everything about Jesus excites me. Those who know me know. If I see them, I'm like a lamb. I can't talk. Hallelujah. Amen. But I thank God. God had given me a wonderful pastor who pushes me. And so today we're going to push one another. He keeps pushing me. He keeps pushing me. I want to draw back and sit down. You know, he told me to sit in front. I said, I'm shy. He said, you are living in disobedience. I said, yes, I, I repent. And I came back. There has to be somebody to push you. And I'm here to join Pastor Randy and Pastor Jennifer and Pastor Falu and Pastor Margaret to push you. So get up. You've sat down for too long. Hallelujah. Revelations 22 and I close. Revelations 22. Stand with me. We're going to read this together. I have so much to say. But we've got to move. Revelations 22. To go up higher, we must be intentional, we must be determined, and we must be intense about it. This lackluster thing must end. It must end. It must end. You do not sit down quietly in a football game. In a baseball game, in a basketball game, and we come to a church and say, Well, I'm quiet. Oh, no, 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 no. That is the devil. Tonight, we're going to cast that devil off your shoulders in the name of Jesus Christ. To go up, you must be disciplined and diligent to form good ha spiritual habits. Discipline, church is not legalistic. It's not legalism. Because grace does not mean indiscipline. Grace does not mean laziness. You've got to work hard. Hallelujah. You've got to demand it of yourself. Stop giving re excuses. Give reasons to go up. This December from today, give yourself reasons to go up. In the name of Jesus Christ. Revelation 22 verse 17. Let's all read it together. And the spirit and the bride say, Come. And let him who hears say what? Come. And let him who test, whosoever desires, let him take the water of life freely. The spirit and the bride say, come. You have heard. We're going to do something different before Pastor Jennifer comes to close us in prayer. You're going to take somebody by the hand. River of life, look for somebody in mosaic and take them by the hand because we're going to go up together. We're not going to go as individuals. The individualism must end in the church of Jesus Christ. The day you gave your life to Christ, 
you forsook and you forgo your, your own rights. I have a right. It is my right. No, when you said yes to Jesus, you lost it. Hallelujah. Get hold of somebody. Get hold of somebody. Let's do it together. Let's do it together. And say to the person, come with me. Let's go up together. Come with me. I have heard the word. Let's go up together. Let's go in twos, in threes. We are going up together. We are going together. He says, come. We are responding. And we are going up together. We're not going as individuals. We're going together. We're going together. I'm going up the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I onward bound. Lord, plant my feet on a higher ground. Lord, lift me up. 